Yo, what is going on guys? Roger here. Welcome to the first video on my channel. For those of you who don't know me, hello, my name is Roger and I just finished studying my first year of IB at the British School of Rio de Janeiro. Now today, I'll be sharing some of my own productivity tips with you guys and also walking you guys through how I am able to study 8 plus hours per day. And now I don't mean 8 plus hours of half studying, half procrastinating, chilling a bit here and there, maybe scrolling a bit on TikTok and watching some YouTube, but rather 8 plus hours of productive and efficient studying. Just a quick disclaimer before I start the video, I just want to say that I'm not any sort of expertise in this area. And I know that each person will have their own studying methods and techniques. So please take what I say with a grain of salt and feel free to implement whatever you think is best for yourself. Now, without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So first, I'll briefly explain my method and tell you guys why I study the way I do and then we'll move on to the small tips. Personally, I like to study in two or four hour blocks, usually from 7.30 to 11.30, from 1.30 to 3.30, and from 7 to 9. Now, when I get into the zone of studying, I don't really like to get up and procrastinate because I've already done the hardest thing, which is actually to sit down and start studying. To take this further, we must first understand that we are humans and not some sort of machines, so we will need time to focus once we sit down. Now studies show that an average time of 23 to 25 minutes is required for us to focus once we sit down or once we are distracted. And this is also why I'm not really a big fan of the Pomodoro method because 25 to 30 minute sessions are just way too short. I'll end up taking breaks just as I've entered the stage of maximum productivity, also known as the state of flow. In addition, taking breaks just gives me an excuse and opportunity to extend the break further and scroll a bit on my phone maybe, which inevitably leads me to procrastinating even more and making the break last longer than intended. Another thing that I really like about my method is that I'm done with everything by 9pm. And this not only includes 8 hours of productive and efficient studying, but also my tennis and basketball trainings, my gym workouts, and maybe also even going out for a run. And I will still have 2-3 to three hours of free time left to do practically whatever I want. Whether it's making YouTube videos for you guys, watching YouTube videos myself, or even playing video games with friends, or just anything I like. And yes, as you might have guessed, I sleep relatively early at 11 p.m., but I'll explain the benefits of that just in a second. So tip number one is get enough sleep. Now, before you even think about studying, please don't play League of Legends or Call of Duty until 2 a.m. in the morning because it really won't help you out in terms of productivity and efficiency. Now, there are two main ways in which sleep can affect our learning and memory. To begin with, a person who is sleep deprived won't be able to focus their attention adequately and so is unable to learn effectively. Now, there is a study that describes the three main stages of memory being acquisition, consolidation, and recall. While acquisition and recall both both happen during these stages when we are awake, consolidation actually happens when we are asleep. Although there is no consensus on how sleep facilitates this process, studies do suggest that there are certain brainwave features during certain stages of sleep that do link to the establishment of distinctive types of memories. Second of all, sleep deprivation and poor quality sleep can also influence our mood which has implications for learning. Now, mood swings can impact our capability to learn new information and also retain what we've learned previously. Now, though prolonged sleep deprivation will have a range of impacts on various people, it is now apparent to us that getting a good night of quality sleep is extremely important to maximizing our efficiency and productivity. And now one of the most common misconceptions that students tend to have is cramming as much revision as possible the night prior to their exams. And as you know how important sleep can be now, please next time before an exam just do yourself a favor and get a good night of quality sleep. Now I know this tip might be a bit more towards the research and scientific side, so here are four things that I personally do to help me get into sleep faster. Tip number one, avoid any sort of caffeine in the afternoon. Tip number two, turn on night shift mode on all of your devices to reduce your blue light intake at night. Tip number three, take a hot shower before you sleep. And tip number four, read a book before you sleep. 
And tip number two I have for you guys is plan in advance. Now what I mean by this is just set a target for yourself the night before, whether it's a to-do list, a calendar, or simply jotting down all the tasks you want to accomplish on a piece of sticky notes. Personally, I like to do this just before I end my final sticking session the night before, and I usually jot down my task on Notion or on a whiteboard. And throughout the day, I just put a tick mark next to each task that I've accomplished, and by the end of the day, it really gives me a boost of self-confidence and motivation just seeing how much productive work that I was able to do that day. Now another benefit of planning in advance is that it helps us to get into the studying zone straight away. As I've mentioned earlier in the video, the hardest part of studying is actually sitting down and start doing your first task. Now if you already have everything planned out and you know what to do, you will waste no time procrastinating but whether start with what you have to do, maximizing your efficiency, minimizing the time wasted. Now tip number three I have for you guys is eliminate distractions. Now before you even start studying, please Please eliminate all the distractions near your workspace. And what I mean from this, for the love of God, please get your phone away. Your phone is probably your worst enemy when it comes down to productivity and maximizing efficiency. If you hear a notification, if you reply to a friend's message, or if you even think about your phone, you will end up getting distracted. What I like to do is I like to put my phone in the living room or in the kitchen where I can't access it easily. And yes, I know a lot of you guys will still use your tablets or computers or laptops for studying and that's normal, so do I. And I have two tips for this situation. Tip number one, if you're an Apple fanboy just like me, just turn on focus mode on all of your devices, it will sync through all the devices and mute all notifications, it will even notify your contacts that you're currently trying to focus and tell them not to bother you. And tip number two I have for you guys is use Forest. Forest is basically an app slash extension that gives you rewards when you focus. It also blocks all applications and websites that you don't want access to when you're trying to focus. And what I really like about Forest is that it gives you rewards that allows you to not only purchase trees inside the game, but also purchase trees for vulnerable families and kids in Africa. Now, this is really, really cool because you can actually help out those families in Africa or any other parts of the world that actually needs help. All right, so tip number four for you guys is have a designated studying space. Now, just before I start, I just want to say that it's totally fine if you don't have a separate room or separate space just for studying. And a lot of people don't. Now, there's this term called classical conditioning, also known as Pavlovian conditioning, where two stimuli, one previously neutral and one previously unconditioned, are linked together to produce a response. For example, when I sit down here in this room, I know that it's time to focus up and start studying. Well, if I want to chill a bit or do some other random stuff, I can just go to another room in my apartment or just any other place. Now, yes, I know we don't live in an ideal world and not all of you guys will have the opportunity to study in a separate place. And for me as well, the computer I use for editing is not really portable. So when I want to do other stuff, when I want to edit, I have to stay in this room. And my best take for this is just to be as productive as possible in one designated spot and just make the most out of it. If you don't think one particular space or your room is working really well for studying, then just try another place in your house, maybe go to a friend's place, maybe try a coffee shop or a library. Okay, tip number five I have for you guys is exercise. Now I'm pretty sure everyone has been through the situation where they just feel exhausted and just want to stop studying. Well, how do you get yourself out of that burden? Is it drinking a triple shot iced latte? Is it drinking Monster Energy Drink or is it Red Bull? And the answer to that is neither of them. All of them are wrong. The correct answer is exercise. Now it might sound controversial that when you're really tired you still have to move and do exercises to get your brain working again but yes that is the truth. Exercise is probably one of the best ways to give you the burst of energy that you really need when you are tired of studying. Physical exercises will stimulate our bodies to release more dopamine, increasing our endorphin levels, enhance reducing stress, and benefiting our bodies in various ways. Physical 
activities will also increase blood flow to the brain and release helpful proteins that will improve our cognitive performances and our concentration. Now, if you're ever tired again, just get up and do 10 to 15 minutes of physical exercises. I personally like to do some push-ups or just jump on a trampoline for a bit. And I just want to take this opportunity to say a personal recommendation is that if you are taking breaks in between sessions, and by these breaks, I mean shorter breaks, I don't really recommend you staying on your phone or any other electronic devices because it will not allow your brain to rest and you'll end up just with a bigger headache. And that is just why I study two two hour blocks in the afternoon rather than one four hour block because I can use this time in between the two two hour blocks to practice some tennis or basketball, go out for a gym workout, and do some physical exercise that can really allow my brain to rest. All right, so tip number six I have for you guys is the correct mindset. A correct mindset will just really give you a bit more of motivation and momentum and just push you forward a bit more. Now, before I start studying, I really like to recall the long-term goal I've set for myself, whether it's getting 100 on a test, scoring 45 points in the IB, or just going to a dream college. And this really just gives me a burst of motivation. I also like to think of this as a game where each time I study or each time I do something productive, I kind of clear off a level in the game and I move on to the next challenge. And this kind of leads on to my next point as well is just try to stay as consistent as possible. Now, if you do one eight hour session in one day and just chill off in the next six days, you're probably not gonna get really far unless you're some sort of genius. Now, when I complete eight hours of studying one day, I already know that I'm capable of doing so, and this is now kind of my new baseline. I personally don't like to give myself any excuses for not being able to study eight hours a day because I know that I'm capable of doing so and doing something in an inferior level is just not my thing and I just want to step things up and level. Now obviously I'm not any sort of robot or machine nor am I obsessed with getting in my 8 hours of studying every day. So. As long as I'm able to study eight hours and achieve my targets 80 to 90% of the time, I think I'm already doing a fantastic job. Now, the other 10 to 20% is just live and things do happen, so I have to be flexible and adjust to it. So yeah, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and was able to learn something new. If you guys have any questions, doubts, or just want to have a few sneaks and peeks of my daily life, feel free to follow me on Instagram, which I'll link down in the description box below. I hope you all found this video helpful. Thank you so, so much for watching and wishing all of you guys a very, very, very productive 2022. And I'll see you in the next video.